Hi, welcome to Midwest Magic Cleaning. My name is Police Academy 5, and today we're going to be cleaning an empty lake house mansion. Uh, this is not a free job. I own a cleaning company on the side, and we were hired to clean this massive house that was built. I don't know, judging from the furnishings and the way things are put together, I would say in the 80s or 90s, probably 90s. Not sure, though. But it's pretty huge, and I will tell you the story behind this. But I want to take you through the house and show you around real quick to show you what we're dealing with. You saw just a second ago, there's two refrigerators, those two wood panel things. Those are both refrigerators with a pantry in the middle. Then we have so many fireplaces in this house. I think there's at least four, if not five fireplaces. I think most of them are gas, but the carpet in this living room has some soot marks. So they may actually have a regular wood burning fireplace in here. Pretty sure they do couple things to note as we're going through the house. Uh, one is that there's only two rooms with carpet and it's the living room and like this sort of uh, nook area. All the rest of the floors are tile or wood or linoleum. It only has I think one or two bedrooms but it's just absolutely massive. It's, it's huge. Wood everywhere. Massive amount of wood everywhere. <laughs> I said massive wood. <laughs> That was pretty cool. Take note of the windows as we're passing from room to room. All of them are super foggy. And that's just because this house hasn't been occupied in, I think, about three years. It's been a while since anybody's actually stayed here. So whenever you have a house that is unoccupied for this long, there's a lot of dust buildup and a ton of cobwebs. I removed so many cobwebs from this house that I'm pretty sure I could have put them on a, a scale and weighed them and actually got a reading so many of them. One of the things that we normally don't do is exterior windows, but we did do them on this house in every place that we could reach without a full-blown ladder or without getting on the roof. Uh, so we did about 75 to 80 percent of the windows inside and out. neat little area where there's kind of this hidden office. When you close the door, it blends in with the rest of the wall from the outside, but you can push the door inward and then walk down this kind of creepy little closeted area and then come into this private office with a view of the deck and the lake. Really, really beautiful. So the story behind this house is this is one of those small towns where you always have one guy who owns like everything. It's sort of like the evil villain from Roadhouse, except this guy wasn't a villain. He was just a dude who owned everything. And uh, so unfortunately, he passed a few years back and they his estate was so large that they've been settling it for a few years now. This lake house is one of those properties and we needed to come in and clean it from top to bottom like a full-blown deep clean so that it could be prepped to sell. So the first day I had Jason and Daniel with me and then... I had them hit and miss for a couple of hours on one day, then nobody the next day, and then just kind of hit and miss whenever they got done with their regular jobs, they would stop out of here and help me. But a large part of what I did was on my own, and this was just absolutely exhausting. So one of the things I want to point out right off the bat is when you're deep cleaning a place, especially an empty place that is going up for sale, there's a certain order that you do things in. DDD is how I, I remember it. It's dusting, then dirt, then depolish. So the first thing we do is we jump in and dust the entire house. Cobwebs, dust, and everything. But that's not going to get everything off of it. There's going to be grime on the countertops, inside the cabinets. There's going to be cobwebs and dirt and debris and probably some mouse poop. Just kind of everywhere. Thank you. 
So this is one of the, the times where I do wear a mask because if you're dusting a house this big for that long, there's going to be so much dust that gets kicked up into the air that it'll make you cough for days. It'll make you feel like you've got a cold. So it's really important to wear a mask. I should be wearing gloves. I'm just, I'm autistic. The gloves feel weird. There was not anything that I would consider to be dangerous in this house. The most uh, annoying thing would be the chemicals that get on my hands, but my hands are rough anyway, so I don't much care about that. However, the guys did wear gloves, they did wear masks, they did the things they're supposed to do because they're smart and I'm not. Except Jason, he's filth. He's a he's a filth bag of filth and I'm tired of it, sick of it. So anyway, what I'm going to do is go through each of these cabinets with Mr. Clean and that's solely to get the grime off. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the countertops and the fireplace. And then after I'm done with that, that's the second D, which is dirt. Then I will go into depolishing, which is the third D, and I, I will do that with liquid gold. Now, over time, this house has produced a lot of moisture because it sits right on a lake. It has a massive, massive deck outside that probably costs more than my entire house to build. But because it's sitting on a lake, a lot of moisture gets into the house and they have humidifiers running or dehumidifiers running. Since there was nobody in the house for this long, some of these cabinets and doors, well, a lot of them, along the bottoms had a, a thin layer of white mold, which is actually harmless. It's the same white mold you get on bread, and all it needs is just to be wetted down with Mr. Clean and then wiped off, and then I will come back over that later with my APC. Now, I want to explain what that is, even though I do it in every video, because we always have tons of new viewers who don't know what APC is. It stands for All Purpose Cleaner. And the way that's made is that I fill a bottle two-thirds of the way full with 91% isopropyl alcohol. Then I fill the remaining part of the bottle with water. And then I add in maybe a half a teaspoon, which is like five or six drops of Dawn dish soap, swirl it up, and then I use that to disinfect. Now you can use the same thing as a shining spray, in which case you just fill like maybe a third of the bottle with alcohol and the rest with water. The more powerful version disinfects, the less powerful versions meant just to shine things up. And you can use either one of those things to clean pretty much anything that shines except for wood. Don't use it on finished wood. But you can use it on stone countertops, mirrors, glass windows, anything that's hard and shiny. Now we're going to do these cabinets with liquid gold, and I love this stuff so much. It's fairly cheap compared to a lot of the other wood polishes, and it's made with like an almond oil or at least an, an almond fragrance, and it smells really good, and the shine lasts for quite a while. It makes a really good protectant. If you've ever used like Armor All on your car dash when you're cleaning it out, liquid gold is like the same thing except for wood. The only things I don't use liquid gold on is uh, rough wood or like untreated wood because it'll just absorb into porous wood that's not been treated or coated in something. 
but you can see how awesome this looks on these uh these counters or i always say counters it's cabinets it's cabinets idiot idiot I also used a little trick here. Since we know that fireplace is not going to be used for another like nine months, I went ahead and used liquid gold on the black paint and it takes off all the white haze and makes that look like brand new paint again. By the time uh, fireplace season rolls around again, the liquid gold will have evaporated so you don't have to worry about it like burning or making smoke or anything like that. But yeah, we're going to do liquid gold on pretty much every piece of wood in this house. The only things we're not gonna use it on is some of the framework is rough wood, like textured rough wood, and then some of the walls are done the same way, so I don't wanna put this stuff on the walls. But any smooth wood throughout the whole house, and it is a lot. Now I'm using that same APC on these windows, and you'll notice that as I do them from the inside, they start to get clearer, but whenever I jump around to the back side of them, that's when it gets crazy. It makes it look like there's no glass at all. And that's just how I roll, son. Now, a lot of these curtains we removed because they were very old, very dated, and very dirty. So we just bagged all those up, and then uh, we ended up dumpstering them. She wanted to think about whether she wanted to get rid of them or not. When I say she, she it's uh, the guy's girlfriend who's now settling his estate. And it's tough letting go of stuff like that that you had in your shared life. So I totally get it. But after, you know, a day or two of thinking about it, she finally said, I don't have any use for those. Let's get rid of them. And I was really glad to hear that because after the death of a loved one, if you start putting emotional attachment onto objects, that's where you start dipping into hoarder territory. And that gets pretty dangerous, in my opinion. Keep the good memories. Get rid of anything that's either a bad memory or is just a thing that you shared. If it's like neutral and, has, and doesn't have any real importance, you really need to get rid of that stuff. Now on the, this white door, I used Mr. Clean and then I jumped straight to a magic eraser because I knew that these stains aren't the kind that are going to be removed off chemical alone. They needed something a little bit more powerful. So I just scrubbed that down and then wiped it, uh, the residue off with just a dry cloth.
Let me back up for a second and explain these windows just a little bit better. On top, he's filth. He's filth. Look at him. He's in there with his teeth in his mouth like he owns something. I, I went ahead and had him do all of the ceiling fans and lights because he deserves it. Those things are terrible to do. I hate them. And so Jason's going to do them just out of, out of sheer punishment for how much of a filth he is. And then in the meantime, Daniel is working on this hidden little, it's kind of a cool thing. It's a hidden mini fridge with like an onion storage bin underneath it. And that black stuff in the bottom is where over time the paint has come off. So they'll either have to replace that drawer or have it re-enameled or whatever. But I told him just clean it as best he could and don't worry about the little rusty uncovered spots in the middle. Anyway, I want to back up to those windows again. I use the APC that I mentioned earlier to clean them as far like that's the chemical part of it. What gets them shiny and see-through is you use a microfiber towel to do the initial scrubbing and cleaning to get the main grime off of it. And then you use an ultra-fine microfiber towel to dry that and eliminate the streaks. The ultra-fine is like using your shirt tail to clean your glasses. Even if you use a liquid to get them clean, you still keep rubbing it until all the liquid is gone and, and it dries. That's the way you want to do the ultra-fine microfiber on a window. Keep wiping it until it dries, and that'll kill off all your streaks. So the countertops I did in a different way than I normally do them. I'm using APC because these are stone top, and really anything that's stone, you don't want to use Mr. Clean on. You can, but it's just better to use APC. And what I'm doing is spraying that down and saturating it and then using a magic eraser to get rid of any stains because stone type countertops, everything from quartz to granite to marble, they have a really bad habit of absorbing things into them. So I use the, the alcohol-based APC to saturate it. Then the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser gets rid of stains. And then I wipe the rest of it down with the Ultra Fine to get rid of uh, the streaks. The sink is made of sort of the same type of stone material. And for this, I'm going to use Barkeeper's Friend. I just rinse out the dead bugs that are in it, Barkeeper's Friend straight in, and then I use a scouring pad and use little circular motions around the whole sink. Then I just rinse it down, wipe out the residue, and it's good to go. So suck it. Now, while this is going on, I need to address something real quick. I have some people who get really angry that I talk about Jason the way that I talk about him and that I call him filth, and they wonder why I dislike him so much, especially since he's my son. And it's not that I dislike him. It's just that he deserves the treatment that he gets. I think that you're all thinking of him as like an innocent bystander in all this and that he's getting abused somehow. But you need to understand that like like just earlier this week, as an example, school is letting out for the summer around here. And in celebration of that, even though Jason's not been in school for several years, he shows up to the elementary schools and seeks out games of dodgeball. And then he goes onto the playground and just this last week, he popped all the balls that they were using. And then when the kids started crying, he picked up one of the children and threw it at a crowd of other children. So he ended up starting a game of Dodge Child on the playground. And, like, you can't defend that. I don't care what, what you imagine he's like as a person. He's, he's evil. He's an evil filth. And I'm not putting up with it. So, like, don't imagine him to be something that he's not. He will Dodge Child your children and not even think twice about it.
So now that I've gotten the countertops done, I'm going to move all of my equipment to that clean countertop because I know I'm done with it. That frees up this space to clean and it gets all my stuff out of the way. So I'm gonna APC this whole countertop and do the magic eraser trick again, then wipe it down and then I'm gonna do the same thing with this stove top. Now I eventually did clean the oven as well with just oven cleaner, but there was no camera angle that made that look cool or interesting or even like I had done much, but I still did it just to do it. So we don't have it on camera, just understand that it did get done. Also I had uh, Jason clean out both of those refrigerators, but it didn't make much difference either. That was just a difference in smell. No matter how well you clean out a, a refrigerator, once you have those turned off and it's set in an empty house for so long, it's going to create a bad smell. The only way to get past it is to clean it with what I had him do was Mr. Clean it, wipe it all out, and then APC it. And the smell that comes out of those is caused by bacteria. The APC kills the bacteria. So after you've cleaned it, you can leave the doors open for, say, a day or overnight or whatever. And then by the next day, most of that smell will have disappeared because the bacteria is dead. What I'm cleaning here is not the stovetop you just saw a minute ago. This is another stovetop that sits on a mini island across the other side of the kitchen. Like I said, the place is huge. We're now into day two and we're gonna be finishing up countertops and drawers and cabinets and then I'm gonna be starting on a massive amount of windows. The window that's in front of me there is one of the cooler ones and they I think they've got five or six of these spread out across the house. But they're octagon windows and they are so cool. I just love them to death. I love them right in the face, right in their stupid wind window face holes. And be like, take my love, octa window. And it's all like, yeah. I love it when you love my octa window. Now one thing that's annoying about doing windows like this inside and outside is you can never see if you left a streak or not from one direction. So I clean it the way I'd normally clean it to where I'm satisfied, then I go back in and look at it from the inside to see if I can see any streaks. And sometimes I have to do that multiple times. If you find streaks, don't reapply your APC. Use a dry, ultra-fine microfiber and just wipe it down dry. That'll get rid of your streaks without having to use uh, any chemicals again. That one is just exactly like cleaning your glasses or sunglasses. You're just dry wiping it. And after all that, we're just going to go back to liquid gold and we're mainly wiping down everything that's visible. Like you don't have to wipe out the insides of the cabinet and stuff with liquid gold. If you want to and you're just kind of crazy about wanting every single inch of everything to shine, then yes, absolutely open those up and, and liquid gold them. But I typically do the things that you can see on the outsides. Same thing with this refrigerator. It's got this like wooden panel. So I Mr. Cleaned it to get the grime off, and then I'm going over the hole outside with liquid gold, and man, it just makes such a difference. Same thing with the wooden doors. 
not just to the pantry, but every wooden door in the house. And what you can't see here is before I sprayed that uh, Mr. Clean on it, it did have the white mold problem. This is where soot from the fireplace had gathered behind pictures. All I'm doing to get rid of that is spraying Mr. Clean directly on the wall, then gently using a magic eraser over the soot marks and then wiping the rest down with a dry clean rag. It just takes seconds to get rid of that. Another fireplace we're gonna do with Mr. Clean and you saw a hazy that was coated in white before I started. If I were just to clean this with Mr. Clean, eventually some of that haze would come back. So I will use the same liquid gold trick on this as I did with the kitchen fireplace. Just a thin layer over the whole thing makes the paint look brand new. While I'm at it, I'll go ahead and get these little ledges. And outside of the windows, this room's pretty much done. Well, windows and floors. Now I want to do the same thing on this door as I did on that kitchen screen door. I'm going to saturate that with Mr. Clean Clean Freak and then I'm going to go straight to the magic eraser. We'll get all the stains off and that'll leave a residue everywhere. So then I'll just come back with a regular dry cloth, wipe down all the residue and the door looks like new. Easy. Hey, while I'm doing this stuff, I want to give a couple shout outs real quick. If you haven't seen any of these channels, it's totally worth seeing them. They're some of my favorites ever. Uh, Ari Katarina is one of my favorites. I think pretty much everybody who watches me probably also watches her. I've been trying to meet her for some time over either email or uh, Instagram or whatever. I just want to meet her and see if we can't set up a collaboration if she ever gets into Illinois. Uh, so if you go on her channel and you happen to give me a shout out in her comments that uh, I would not complain about that. <laughs> Uh, my my favorite by far out of everybody is uh, Clean with Barbie, and that's mainly because she does a lot of houses like I do. Normally, if you're new to the channel, I normally do hoarder houses, very, very bad hoarder houses, and Barbie does the same thing. Uh, Barbie and I are friends, um, and we talk all the time. She's a really cool person, but if you can give her uh, a little bit of love, she's, she's pretty awesome. Go to her channel and uh, not only check out her videos, but let her know how you think she's doing because she sometimes deals with trolls and I think she needs some support every now and then because she, she's really good. There's a guy I watch uh, called Post 10. He just unclogs culverts and takes apart destructive beaver dams when it's not going to harm the beavers and like camps out in old abandoned places. And he just It's kind of a weird channel. You have to see it to understand it, but he's a super awesome guy. 
I've been trying to meet him for a while too, but he's very, very private. Uh, there's a guy called Outdoors with Eric. He's super awesome. Uh, him along with Lawn Care Juggernaut. Uh, Lawn Care Juggernaut actually congratulated me on my plaque, which I thought was super cool because he's a pretty big YouTuber, but he's super nice, does a lot of free. The things that I do for free, like cleaning hoarder houses, he does the same thing except for with people's lawns. Then there's Living with Cambria. She's awesome. Get It Done with Gabby is also awesome. Mom Likely is great. I want to give you guys a list of things to watch to where you'll never have to leave your house ever again. You'll just be watching YouTube channels all day long. SB Mowing is another one that I'd like to get a hold of, as well as Al Blades. I'm a super huge fan of Al Blades, and I want to meet him so bad. I would love to do a collaboration one day where I get with one of the lawn guys, and I do the inside of somebody's house while they do the outside, and we can, like, help each other. So you could see me doing some lawn work with, like, say, Al Blades, and then see him doing some uh, massive cleanup on the inside of somebody's house with me. But anyway, that's that's kind of a long-term dreaming right now. Right now, I'm too busy to travel, but we'll get there. Oh, hey, look, more windows. Now, some of these windows are going to be hazy even after I'm done with them. And so, for instance, there's one sliding door that looks super hazy when I'm done because they had dogs and the dogs would scratch the glass. But also, some of these windows have minor cracks on the outside. There's only like two of them that have that. Once you have a have a crack in a window like that, Moisture gets inside the double pane and they end up staining from the inside. And there's no way to really clean those, especially these old ones, because they're sealed. So the only way to fix them is to repair the glass, clean the insides, repair it, and then start from scratch. But it means like taking the actual glass out of the window. I think we're on like day four already. And I'm only judging because of, uh, well, from memory and by the outfits that I'm wearing. These outfits, if you ever wonder why I wear clothes that look kind of nice, these are the clothes that I wear whenever I go to clients' houses. These are actually work clothes. I don't spend a lot on these. I just go to Walmart whenever they have sales and pick up some decent-looking polo-type shirts, and then I pick up their in-general work slacks because they're cheap. Very soon, we'll end up making some uh, uniforms, with a logo and everything so that me and both of the, the guys have more professional stuff that all matches. Oh, speaking of which, if you didn't know already, we have merchandise. We have t-shirts, mugs, like all the stuff that you'd normally expect out of merch. We're using T Public, and I will link that in the description. But we've got a Suck It shirt, a Hey Look More Dishes shirt. We've got a picture of Jason's big old giant face with the word filth underneath it. And then we've got another one for people who hate it when I call him filth. Jason's big giant face with hearts around it and Team Jason on the shirts. Soon, we're going to be getting one with our logo on it because I've been asked to. Normally, I, I wouldn't do that because I didn't think anybody would want it. But I've been asked a lot, so we're going to do it. We're also getting a spin kick shirt. We've got a bunch of shirts. That's how I roll sun shirt. Pretty much anything that... I've said on the channel that's ridiculous will end up being on a shirt at some point. But again, that's linked in the description.
These doors are the worst things in the world to clean because each one of these panes has to be done individually and you have to like jam your finger into the rag and then outline each one of these little rectangles. You have to outline the outside of those with your finger in order to get into the corners and then clean it. And then you have to go back with the uh, ultra fine to get rid of the streaks and it's, it's so much work. Your hands and shoulders and arms just burn after those. Octagon window. I love you too, Police Academy 5. Some other new things that we have, uh, I started up a bunch of social media stuff. Like, for instance, we have Instagram, TikTok. We have Snapchat, but I think I'm getting rid of Snapchat. I don't see the point. I get nonstop ads from, like, porn stars. <laughs> I just, I, I'm just tired of it already. I don't know what to do with Snapchat. I mean, Instagram is just fine. But all the social media sites are, are linked. If you're on a computer... It's on my main page up by that little cover photo. And if you're on a phone, it's on the About tab. But I post there pretty regularly. In fact, I try to do TikTok every day or at least every other day. This is one of the bathrooms that needs some work. So what I'm trying to do here is to make this look as new as possible because, I mean, you could get somebody in here who likes that vintage 90s look or 80s. I, I can't tell which decade it is. I grew up in both those decades, but I have trouble placing decorations with years. But like if anybody really did any work to this bathroom, it would just be updating. But just in case they wanted that to remain the same, I wanted to get this as new looking as possible. Which, I mean, honestly, that's what you're trying to do whenever you're doing a what they call a turnaround house. That's what you're trying to do anyway. But I specifically wanted to put a lot of work into this bathroom because it had the potential to shine. And the way it looked whenever I first got in here was pretty rough. Here's the door I was talking about. You can see that white spotted mold everywhere. Again, that's harmless. It's sort of like white mildew almost, but it's, it's kind of fluffy. It's easy to wipe off. So I'm just going to Mr. Clean that, get the mold off, and then I want to put liquid gold over the top of the, the whole door, and it looks like brand new when I'm done. The shower was difficult. You see those black lines where you would expect grout to be? That's not really grout. It's actually the tiles are either one piece with indents or the grout is just worn off over the years. So those are just little indents and divots between the tiles. 
So the way I took care of that was using Barkeeper's Friend and a scouring pad, and I couldn't get all of it out. I got the majority of it out. But as you can see, this is going to need updated anyway. But I ended up doing that to the floors and the walls, and then I went back over the whole thing with Mr. Clean and a rag and dried up all the residue and wiped out all the residue. Now you may be wondering why I'm using such a regular sized tiny broom on such a massive floor and I do this through the whole house. That's because one, I'm crazy son. And two, the only thing I'm doing here is getting the majority of the, like the big chunks of dirt out of here. I'll get that with a regular broom and you can see how much of it there is. And then later I have Jason go back over every floor with a dust mop. One of those gigantic ones that is used for like a gym floor. And that gets all the dust and the remainder of the stuff out. But if I use that giant dust broom on something that's this dirty, all I'm doing is clogging up my broom and making a huge mess. Doing it like this, I get the big chunks out first and then I use the dust broom as like a fine point type of cleaning. All right, we're wrapping up day four, and we're getting ready to go into the final day here in just a second, which I think is the most impressive day because we do some kind of crazy stuff. Oh, hey, look, more windows. So now we're upstairs and we're going to wrap up the windows. There's a lot of them up here. Now, fortunately, there's an upstairs deck so that I can step right out and do the outsides of these. But there's some windows in, in another room where it leads out to the roof. And there's no way I'm getting my old butt out on a roof to do the outsides of windows. But I did discuss that with the uh, realtor before we started this project. You can see too some of the uh, really cool features of this house is they have trees that grow up through their deck and they have multiples of those. And one outside the garage, three or four of them that are in the deck itself and they have the deck cut out around it. It's, it's so cool looking. If you ever have a big old hankering for extra videos, especially of me just doing stupid stuff and you know communicating with, uh, with people more than I do on the regular channel. I have a members only section. I think we're approaching 500 members now. 400 or 500, I'll have to double check on that. But I do an extra video every Wednesday. And then I also make extra posts that only the members see. And I do like lots of pictures and stuff like that. Um, if you can't afford it, it's like $4.99 a month. If you can't afford that, please don't do it. It's only just an extra for people who want to help support the channel financially. I use a lot of that money for my free cleanups to buy, you know, materials, gas, chemicals. I've gone through probably 10 vacuums in the last year. That's what that money goes toward. But just look for the join button. If you can't find the join button, ask around in the comments because somebody will be able to help you. There's an issue with like a iPhone. If you use 
an iPhone or an iPad, if you use the app, the YouTube app, the join button doesn't show up. It's an Apple versus YouTube thing. But as far as I know, if you use the browser and go straight to YouTube through the browser and just find my page there, then the join button shows up. For everybody else, you shouldn't have any issues at all, but the, the iPhone and iPad thing is like an issue. Also, if you haven't subscribed, that would be super awesome if you do, and there's an actual reason for it. So I had asked people to subscribe a few months back because we were getting close to getting our plaque, our silver plaque, and that's at 100,000 subscribers, and people subscribed like crazy. We got our plaque. I was so happy. And then the next one of those plaques is a gold plaque, and that's at a million subscribers. And there was a big part of me that said there's no chance that we're ever going to get that. But man, people just keep subscribing. I think it's actually possible. So if you could help me along to for us to reach that goal, that would be so super cool. And if not, I didn't want you to subscribe anyway, devil worshiper. I don't put up with no devil or worshiping. Now here's Jason with the filth, Ugh, filth. Anyway, here's Jason using the uh, dust broom and you can see every swipe that he makes. You can see the little trail of clean that it leaves as he's getting all the settled dust off of here. This makes it to where whenever we mop, it, it doesn't, it's not as prone to streaking because all the dirt and the dust is gone. If we leave that stuff on there and we try to mop over the top of it, all we're doing is spreading dust around and it is going to streak. Thank <laughs> you. 
We're going to mop this a little bit differently than we do most of our floors. We're going to start out with just a Lysol cleaner. We could have used Murphy's soap on this, but I wanted a Lysol just in case there was anything I needed to disinfect. And we're going to do a very quick mop. We don't have to get every square inch of this floor with Lysol, but I wanted to get the main mopping done just kind of quickly. Then what we're going to do is go over the same floor with water and we're going to water mop it and use that as sort of a rinse. And the reason we're going to do that is because anytime you use a floor cleaner like Lysol or Murphy's or anything like that, it's going to leave a small residue behind that is going to collect dirt or collect dust. And that soap residue by itself is enough to leave streaks. Whenever you water mop over the top of it, it takes those streaks out and kind of smooths out the finish a little bit. Now I'm going to go over both of the carpets with a vacuum and man, just vacuuming by itself made this look so much better, but we're actually going to come back with my Bissell carpet cleaner and go over this with, with an actual carpet cleaner here in a bit. Now it doesn't make it look brand new, but you will see a pretty big difference between using the Bissell and, and what you're seeing right now. And I just realized we're actually still on day four, uh, day five will start here after I'm done with this, uh, Bissell here in a minute. And I'm telling you, after all this mopping, Jason was sore. <laughs> I was too. After all my sweeping and especially the windows. If you ever wonder what wears you out the most when you're cleaning a, a house like this, it's windows. Because you're wiping the windows in a different direction than you wipe countertops. You're going vertical instead of horizontal. And there's a lot of up and down to where you have to get down on your knees for some. And then you have to stand up to get the tops of the windows. And so it's like a constant calisthenic type of workout that happens just all freaking day long. Here comes the Bissell. What we're doing here is we're pulling the trigger to release the cleaning solution, which is just a Bissell Pet Hair Max Pro with a half twist, whatever the name of it is. It's, it's Bissell Pet something. We're pulling the trigger as we go forward, and that releases the chemical. And then we pull back very slowly to extract that chemical. And we keep doing that until you can see a visible difference in the carpet. Here's how dark that water is after one pass. It looks like coffee.
So this is day five. I'm here by myself for most of the day. And this is a downstairs apartment that needs lots of work, but I, again, want to get it as clean as possible so that we can see what we're working with or what they're working with. The very first thing I do is I'm going to vacuum out, shop vac, all the countertops and inside every drawer and every cabinet because this is sat so long without people in it that a lot of the critters have gotten inside of it. So cobwebs, spiders, a little bit of mouse poop here and there. That's going to happen when you have a, an empty place, especially over long periods of time. Now, I didn't see any evidence of new or current activity from rodents. This, this all looked old to me. And that happens over time, too. As like when somebody first moves out, any crumbs and stuff like that is going to attract rodents. And then after all the food's gone, there's no reason for them to stay there. So I vacuum all that stuff out, and then I'm going to sweep the floor right off the bat, which I normally don't do. And that's mainly because I just could feel that grime under my feet, and I wanted to feel some sense of progress. So once the floor is semi-clean, it feels like I've made a lot more progress than I actually have, and I don't get overwhelmed. Now I can go back to the countertops and the stove and all that and clean that with Mr. Clean. Then I can make my workstation on top of the area that I just cleaned. That way it's out of the way. My stuff isn't sitting on dirty areas that need to be cleaned. I don't have to move a whole bunch of stuff around multiple times. Now normally on a sink like this, I would use Barkeeper's Friend, but this was actually in really good condition. So all I did was rinse the bugs down the drain, then I used Mr. Clean, a microfiber towel, and then wiped it down with an Ultra Fine really quick, and that's all it needed. Oh hey, more windows. This door was nuts. I don't know if you can see it here, but on the very bottoms of those, it's green algae from the lake. So I had to actually spray that down with my APC, and then I had to take a razor scraper and scrape it like I was scraping a fish tank.
All right, so now that all that's done, I'm finally going to get to the ceiling, and this is where I took off just a massive amount of cobwebs. I'm going to knock all those down, get them on the floor, then I'm going to do a little bit of sweeping and then bounce into the bathroom. There's two things that I did not show myself cleaning. One is the toilet and the other is the shower. And that was another issue where I didn't have room to put the camera. But even if I did have room, there wasn't a ton of difference between what it looked like before and what it looked like after. Plus, at this point, I had like 500 million hours worth of video that I had to edit. And so I, I'm not all that sad that I didn't get that footage. Almost done with the apartment and then we have one more thing to clean and we're all done. So I'm going to vacuum out this sink. That's all bug, dead bugs and stuff. After I vacuum out the bottom, you can see this sort of white tan residue on the bottom. That is a combination of lime buildup and just stains. So what I'm going to do is clean the whole thing with Mr. Clean like normal. Then I'm going to take my razor scraper and get the lime scale out of it. And then I'm not too worried about the actual staining. It's a very old sink. In order to get the staining out, I would have probably had to have used sandpaper, but I'm not that concerned about getting that sink that clean. That goes beyond cleaning and goes into like restoration work. So I did the best I could with what I had, and it did clean up about 90% of that. Now we're just going to sweep it all again one more time and then we're going to mop it like it stole something. Because that's what you do with thieves. You mop them right in their thief face.
All right, last thing to clean and then we're out of here. This is the garage. So I'm going to pull a little trick here. Instead of sweeping all this stuff up, they had a leaf blower. So I just took that sucker up and I'm just going to leaf blow everything to begin with. That's not all I'm going to do in here. But I'm using it on the walls because the walls had a bunch of cobwebs and the leaf blower was really good about taking those off. I'm also going to use it to clean out the insides of those cabinets over there. Once I get the leaf blower to get all the main stuff off of it, then I'm going to use a push broom to go into a little bit finer detail on the main garage floor, the concrete part that's off to our left. Then I'm going to switch to doing windows and then I'll give a quick pressure wash on the garage floor itself. And then this thing will be pretty much done. There wasn't a whole lot that we had to do in here. Now we're on to windows and these are pretty easy. I just had to take the screens out and thank God that though you see that little rectangular rack that's on the left hand side leaning up against that door. That was a removable framework. So normally I have to clean around all those. This one you could remove, do the window and then put that right back in. There was only one window in which I couldn't remove that framework. But I'm not going to complain because as long as I could get it out of, of at least one of those, man, that saved me so much time. All right, now we're just going to give a quick pressure wash on this floor. And it's not to, to detail pressure wash it. That's not why we're doing it. There's a little bit of like oil stains and stuff like that on there. And I just wanted to see if I could get those to ease up a bit. It made a bit of a difference, but not a huge difference. But I wanted to at least try. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please consider it. I'd love to get to a million and then rub my gold plaque right in Jason's face. Filth. He is filth is what he is. And members, I will see you on Wednesday. For everybody else, I'll see you next weekend. I'm going to spend the whole weekend doing jack because I am exhausted and I need a break. I need a break. Later.